Well, good day, fellow constitutionalists. I'm your host, Dan Clements, your constitutional warrior. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about Maxine Waters. Uh, in my uh, show prep, I came across an article on Slate, and the title of the article is Five Reasons Maxine Waters Should Be Our Next President by D. Watkins. And I'll have the video here. I'll show it to you. It's not a very long video at all. And I, I had to stop laughing at first because I thought it was a parody at first. But I found out this guy is serious. <laughs> this guy is real serious. And so I'm going to play the whole video, and we'll come back, and we'll, we'll, I'll show you some of the quotes that I found from Maxine Waters. They're very easy to find on the Internet. Uh, these aren't anything that are new to me. shouldn't be new to my listeners. But I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you in its entirety, and then we'll discuss it just a little bit, and I'll put this thing to bed uh, so I can upload it to YouTube. So just give this video a real quick listen. I'm, I'm, I'm D. Watkins here with the Salon, with the Salon Five, five. And, and today we're going to give you five reasons why Maxine Waters should be our next president. Number five, Maxine understands the people. She's the fifth of 13 children, and she started working in segregated restaurants at the age of 13, so you know hard work is in her blood. Number four, Maxine Waters has an amazing reputation of being a fearless, outspoken advocate for women, the poor, children, people of color, pretty much everybody that was left out of the Trump campaign. Fighting for what's right is not a new thing to Maxine Waters. Before she was even elected to Congress, she was out there on the front lines fighting against divestment from the South African apartheid regime. Number three, Maxine was actually one of the few people who was against the war in Iraq. And that's something that Clinton, Bush, Trump, McCain, and all those people couldn't really figure out. Number two, she loves the millennials and we love her back. Last week, she confessed her love for us on Now This, where she talked about everything she's learning from us and how she has to evolve with the people. She's learning the language. She's using the internet. And we're all moving forward because of that. The number one reason why we want Maxine Waters to be our next president president because she's not afraid to attack the right. She's had tough words for everybody, from Bill O'Reilly all the way up to the White House. Maxine Waters is one of the only few Democrats that's stepping up. She's not scared to talk about Trump, his ties to Russia, and letting him know in her own words, bombing another country does not make you presidential. These are tough times, and in tough times, you need a tough leader. That's why I nominate Maxine Waters to be our next president. Because again, Maxine Waters let you know that she is a strong black woman, and she will not be intimidated. So neither should you. <laughs> oh, the only thing I think Maxine Waters uh, is actually intimidated by is actual intelligence. Just saying, folks. Um, some of the points he was going to cross, talking about the people that participated, uh, the, the forgotten men and women of America, uh, are not an ethnic group. They're not a race. Uh, they're Americans, very diverse as far as ethnicity and race and everything. So right off the bat, uh, some real bogus, you know, um, fake news type commentary on Donald Trump. And again, I didn't vote for him. I'm a member of the Constitution Party. I voted for Daryl Castle. Uh, and I'll, I'll give kudos to Trump when he does things right, and I'll criticize him when he does things wrong. And I've had a lot of criticism uh, lately of his trade policy and stuff like that, and also on the the uh, Syria conflict but uh, this guy he's serious folks and, and this is this is in my opinion from what I've been running into on social media this is typical of Millennials on the left uh, they they don't do the research themselves they they glob onto these Democrats that want to give them the store they don't want to work for and earn what they have they want to be the left the millennials on the left want everything to be given for them they think that the the rich white man or a, a man like me that has white privilege uh should sit down and shut up and let them take over the country and 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 at the same in the same breath they want me to pay for everything or they want other people to pay for the stuff that they have that, that they haven't earned and, and so i i struggled mightily <laughs> watching this without laughing i mean this this guy if he if he is serious uh the democrat party's in trouble folks it really is because in that short video alone it showed his intellectual ignorance as far as the facts uh, he is going along with this critical thinking theory where they it's a foregone conclusion that trumps all these things that he says he is and they just go and cherry pick the facts or just don't even give the facts at all and then make someone like Maxine Water look better than what she is. Now, a couple 
quick facts about Maxine Waters, and this doesn't necessarily make her a bad person. She did have a a life, uh, a work life before uh, politics, unlike Bernie Sanders. But she has been an elected official since 1976. Folks, I graduated in 1980, so she's been in Congress longer than uh, I've <laughs> longer than I've been out of high school. Okay, that's a long time. 1976 is a long time, uh, and to me, she doesn't have any courage. What she does doesn't take any courage. She's going along with the crowd. You know, it doesn't take any courage to vote no on Iraq. It takes a little bit of intelligence to vote no on Iraq. And i got to give her kudos there that, that she at least had some uh, intelligence there on some of these uh, these wars that we're in. Uh, she fought against apartheid in South Africa, but she wasn't the only one. And this wasn't just <laughs> this, this fight against apartheid just was not along uh, racial lines. I mean, I was against apartheid. I thought it was horrible. And there's a lot of other folks, and it didn't matter what the race was, that are right-thinking Americans that were against apartheid. So she's, he acts like she stood alone. You know, she's a, the lone voice crying in the wilderness against apartheid when she wasn't. Um, talk, <laughs> and it, it, it just it amazes me, some of the stuff that she's actually said. Now, she's actually come out, and uh, I'll put a link up in the show notes page here to where I found some of these quotes, but this is a meme that covers these quotes. Uh, she said on one occasion, uh, the Tea Party can go straight to hell. She, she didn't agree with uh, people redressing government. And, and the reason why she disagrees with the Tea Party is because she doesn't agree with their policies and their politics. Okay? Uh, she said another time in a, in a um, hearing with oil companies, guess what, and this is her own words, and this is on video, guess what this liberal would be all about? This liberal would be about socializing, um, 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 would be about basically taking over and the government running all your companies. Um, okay, basically socializing. You had it right the first time, Maxine. Um, they were waving the American flag, and I thought that was outrageous behavior, that someone might be patriotic and raising the American flag or, or waving it uh, during some type of march or protest or uh, whatever it was. Uh, on the Rodney King riots, it was some it was somewhat understandable, if not acceptable, for these riots. Again, voicing what a lot of other Democrats in this last election was talking about, it's okay uh, to uh, go out and hurt and maim people as long as you're doing it in the name of social justice and, and uh, social democracy, things like that. And then finally, during the sequester, you know, they're talking about uh, cutting back uh, services and and programs and stuff. Uh, over 170 million jobs could be lost. Well, the problem with that is someone should have been speaking in her ear and letting her and giving her words to say. There's only an estimated about 135 to 140 million jobs in the country. So she over she overestimated that by about 30 million jobs. And that's something you would think a champion of the people would know and would understand. So, like I said, I, I found the video to be entertaining. Um, they're serious, though. These millennials out there are serious uh, when they talk about uh, Bernie Sanders or Maxine Waters or, you know, even, God forbid, Hillary Clinton. And Maxine Waters is 78 now. You add four more years to that, she's going to be in her early 80s uh, before she'd be able to run for president. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying anything against age. You know, if she wants to do it, go for it. But I'm telling you what, I think the... <laughs> I don't think she'd make it much past the primaries or at least the first couple debates. I think she'd get smoked because uh, I've seen this woman too many times on camera uh, in congressional hearings. And I'm telling you what, folks, um, and this is I'm trying to I'm trying to be amicable there here. <laughs> She's not the sharpest pencil in the box. Let's put it that way. <sighs> this has been Dan Clements. I'm your constitutional warrior. Remember. Keep fighting a good fight, folks, and, and let's keep putting these uh, Democrats and these liberals in their place. Have a great rest of the day, and God bless. <laughs>